Malcolm's Bosnia, a short history, has a few significant virtues and, alas, numerous faults. Yet, those faults lie mainly in that shadowy region of unspoken word. Malcolm is vociferously silent on those facts that would erode the book's central thesis, and which is buried deeply enough for an uninformed reader, that is, some 99% of the general reading public to diagnose the author's partisanship. This is a book on and about Bosnian Muslims, with Croats and Serbs appearing on the scene only because they are unavoidable. Well, one cannot easily write a chronicle of a region ignoring two-thirds of its populace or as bets noirs whose stale nationalist mythologies, for instance in slogans like, Hands off Bosnia, are Malcolm's special concern. So, since this is a book full of blanks and unwritten sentences, here we will present a few historical facts, avoiding the heated topic of recent years following the 1992-1995 war tumultuous events. First, very concise and informative survey on the Bosnian Church controversy, based on John Fine's groundbreaking works on Bosnian Christians. This is Malcolm's finest hour. Second, scattered throughout the book, one can find a wealth of information on many variables defining the societal condition in Bosnia. At the particular moment of time, demographic statistics, travelers' observations and picturesque orientalist tales on the ways of these exotic Balkan peoples, evaluation of essential historiographic references and much more. Third, this work is a tombstone to greater Serbian expansionist project based on Serbian outright falsifications and distortions of Bosnia's history, especially ethnic composition of medieval Bosnia, misappropriation of much of Bosnia and Herzegovina multicentenary literary and artistic cultural heritage, and efforts to present Bosnian Muslims and Croats as some kind of Serbs with amnesia, that has, combined with loudspeaker propaganda, in the past two centuries permeated the academia throughout the world and, in addition, general uninformed Western perception of Yugoslavia and its central region. Which are Malcolm's blind spots and failures? Since his hidden focus is the growth of Bosnian Muslim ethnicity to national self-awareness and any form of statehood, he must of necessity exclude or disregard a multitude of facts that would refute his multiculturalist dogma. So, first, he has cautiously avoided inclusion of maps that would show the territorial compass of medieval Bosnia, especially if a succession of maps from the 10th to the 15th centuries had been juxtaposed on the current sovereign Bosnia and Herzegovina state boundaries map. An imaginary innocent reader would have been greatly surprised had he been shown that the medieval, pre-1379, Bosnia covered somewhere between 20 and 40 percent of the contemporary republic and that more than 50% of the contemporary Bosnia has historically been part of the Croatian state in one form or another. Current boundaries are a legacy of the Ottoman expansion and nothing sacrosanct per se, a product of balance of powers and something intrinsically contestable. This doesn't mean that we can nonchalantly brush off the last five centuries, but it equally shows that hands off Bosnia slogan is just politicos' empty talk. Which Bosnia? What boundaries? Second, Malcolm has done a heavy cultural or historical misrepresentation in a few cases, again, a vocal silence. Second A, the vast majority of extant pre-Ottoman Bosnian written works of art, illuminated manuscripts decorated mainly in Romanesque style. The best examples being the Hval Miscellany and Duke Havoye Missal, are written in Croatian Glagolitic and Western or Croatian. Bosnian Cyrillic script and are a part of Croatian cultural heritage, as are the oldest monuments of literacy on the Bosnian soil, for instance the Humak tablet and Gakovies fragments, one can see examples at the address on the screen. So much for pre-Ottoman Bosnian, Slavic, diffused and confused identity that is neither Croat nor Serb. Second B, author's survey of cultural development from the 1600s to the 1800s is, monumentally, myopic. He has enumerated almost exclusively Bosnian Muslim writers who had been writing mainly in Oriental languages, and has neglected Bosnian Croat Franciscan writers who, writing both in Croatian and Latin, had, in literary production, dwarfed their Muslim contemporaries beyond dispute. Of course, 
measured by European best writing standards of these times, Milton, Defoe, Johnson, Lessing, these are provincial and dated works, but they are the best literature that has come from Bosnia during these times, and are ignored only to give boost to the author's implicit thesis, it's Bosnian Muslims who center, one way or another, the region portrayed in the myopic narrative. To present a balanced view of pre-Ottoman Bosnian identity, one could enumerate various arguments from all sides. Most of what is now Bosnia and Herzegovina, however, belonged to the Croatian kingdom until the 11th century. In the 10th century, Croatian King Tomislav routed Magyars or Hungarians somewhere in the Majevica region in eastern Bosnia, as Serbian historian Relija Novaković surmised. Pro-Croatian arguments about the character of medieval Bosnian polity would be First, the official title of Bosnian ruler was Ban, which is Croatian, too, derived, perhaps, from the Avars. Second, the language in the most medieval Bosnia and Hum was Western Stokavian Green Area, one among Croatian, and not Serbian dialects. Third, denominationally, most old Bosnians from the 11th to the 15th century were Catholics and all Bosnian rulers were Catholics. This is shown by a multitude of Catholic monasteries and churches in the pre-Ottoman period. Fourth, the dominant script in Old Bosnia was Bosnian or Croat or Western Cyrillic, different from the Serbian one, and in usage also among Croats in Dubrovnik and central Dalmatia. Five, the only continuity with pre-Ottoman, pre-15th century Bosnian polity are Bosnian Franciscans, who are also Croats in modern national sense. As for pro-Serbian arguments, they would be First, in two or three early sources, belonging to the 9th or 10th century, Bosnia is mentioned as a part of Serbia. Second, Serbian presence is evident in the eastern part of Bosnia and especially Huam in Orthodox monasteries. Third, the first Bosnian king Tvrtko had publicly declared he was a successor to the Serbian throne through his grandmother who belonged to the Serbian Nemanjic dynasty, he occupied parts of the western Serbia and had imported Serbian scribes, who changed, partially, the physiognomy of Bosnian chancery letters for some time. Also, many Bosnian rulers had adopted Serbian name in their official intitulations, more frequently than the Croatian one. Bosnian autochthonous, non-Croatian and non-Serbian arguments. First, only in Bosnia and Huam was the Bosnian church as semi-official and influential, as different from Croatia and Serbia. Second, although variants of Bosnian Cyrillic can be found in the central Dalmatia and Dubrovnik, the dominant Bosnian script was neither Glagolitic and Roman, as in Croatia, nor Serbian Cyrillic, in Serbia. Third, Bosnian rulers generally referred to themselves as Bosnians, not as Croats nor Serbs. Malcolm succeeded in presenting this historical polity as an individualized cultural political area. Also, he followed the traditional four stages historical classification, medieval period, Ottoman period, Austro-Hungarian period and Yugoslav period. So far, this remains the best work on history of that contested land in English unfortunately because virtually all other works are journalist and postmodernist sterile propaganda aiming at creation of a functioning state which, almost 30 years after cessation of war, remains essentially a colonial protectorate. And three peoples in that protectorate have three identities, nationalities, and three visions of their past, present and future. To conclude, the author's partiality in service of giving credence to Bosnian Muslim political agenda is glaringly evident. But not to the average perplexed reader. Malcolm made a crucial mistake in presentation of the history of Bosnia and Herzegovina, because he ignored William Faulkner's admonition in one of his novels, the past is never dead. It's not even past. Here are some works on the history concerning the Bosnian land in English. In the links below the video you can find these documents.